Hey, my renders, welcome back. Um, as promised, um, I have a uh, kind of a mini tutorial on how I made the helmet for How to Train Your Dragon. I'm actually in the process of making the helmet now, so um, I want to show you my process on how I've gotten there. Um, so first off, basically what I do is I take some screen captures. This is a screen capture from the trailer, um, I don't know how shiny it is, if you can see it, um, of Hiccup's helmet. And I have several dif different angles of it uh, so that you can actually see it in a variety of different positions. Um, so after I've gotten these screen captures and these pictures, um, what I ended up doing is I start with a rubber ball and you can go to any type of sporting goods store or maybe even the supermarket that sells like those red rubber balls. This one happens to be green. They're not very expensive. They're like six, seven dollars and you want to get something that's close to the size of your head um, that you're going to be putting it on. So what I did is I took the uh, rubber ball and I kind of shaped it into the d uh, d direction of the shaping of his actual helmet. Um, as you can see here, this is kind of the front and then it kind of goes up the back there and everybody's head's different so this one is pretty much just gonna fit my head um, after I got the shape from the ball then I go in and I put in uh, using duct tape uh, the shape for the eyes uh, the visor and the the face mask after I've gotten that I go through with once again duct tape and create the shell and this is the back of his shell and it goes uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and four and basically getting this shape from there. After I have those shapes then I move on to my next step which is I like to use yoga mats. Um, yoga mat's not as expensive as leather, but it still gives me the thickness close to the leather. And once again, it comes together. This one's been all cut apart because I've actually moved on to the leather section. But you can see it's got the same different, same pattern, but different material. And I use duct tape to tape it together after the patterns because what I'm going to do after I have that is once I cut the duct tape again, now I have my pattern to cut my leather and ideally I only want to be cutting my leather once I don't want to be cutting it more than once so I've cut the leather and this particular one has the I embossed or uh, hand tooled on the uh, the logo for the dragon um, stitched and sewn the helmet together and now the face mask um, as you can see here, this also has some curvature to it, so what I also did is I wet molded. And wet molding is what I'm going to go into the kitchen in a minute, and I'll show you because I'm going to show you wet molding these guys here. Um, so I've wet molded it, kind of given it some shape, and then sewn it together. I haven't done any wet molding on this one because I needed to do some tooling and you generally want to do your tooling before you do your wet molding because um, once it solidifies, it's harder so it's uh, not as easy to tool. So you want to do your tooling first. Um, remember that whenever you wet mold it's going to uh, uh, shrink. It's gonna, so you want to make sure that your sizings are all a little bit larger on your final because it will shrink down. Otherwise all the work that you've done in terms of your sizing is going, you're going to lose that. Um, this guy here is actually a little bit larger. Um, because I'm going to put some liners in there too if I um, need to put in some uh, padding because of the stitching and the I just want it to be as comfortable to wear as possible so that's basically my process um, let's go over to the kitchen now and um, I'll actually show you the process of boil molding or wet molding there's actually a French name for it I want to say brulee or something like that but I'm not positive and you can look that up online so let's go over to the kitchen now and uh, let's uh, show you what it's like what it's like Okay, um, so here we are in the kitchen. Um, before we get started, I want to uh, tell you a couple of tools that might make it easy for you. Um, first off, you want to get a large um, pot, kettle, uh, that you can fill with water, obviously, and get it to uh, the temperature you want it at. I typically like my temperature between 160 and 180. Um, the hotter the water, 
uh, the more it's going to absorb into the leather and it's going to shrink it up even more and it's going to be even hotter, uh, harder. But you got to make sure that you don't leave it in there too long because you still want to be able to work with it. Um, I like between 160 and 180. So your next item is you want to get a thermometer so that you can actually check to make sure that your water is at the right temperature that you want it at. So um, I checked earlier, we got this guy going. Um, the normal temperature that your water comes out of your faucet is roughly around 140 degrees. So you do need to get it on the stove and heat it up a little bit more. Um, when I made the helmet uh, halves, um, I'll show you in a second. One half, um, I had it at 180 degrees, which I felt was too hot and it's a lot darker. The second time I did it, I had it at about 170 degrees, 160, 170 degrees, and I didn't leave it in as long, and it's a little bit softer, a little bit easier to work with, and I felt like that was the right way. So right now, I got about 169, so I'm feeling that that's pretty good. Um, I'll put it in there in a second. Um, it'll stay hot for it. Next thing I have is I have this wooden bowl. This is going to help kind of mold it into a shape, and I, as you can see, I also have a bandana on because I'm going to put it on my head and I'm going to kind of wrap it around and I don't want my hair getting in the way and I don't want my hair to get super wet. So the bowl will help mold it. This um, on top of my head will help mold it. And then um, I'll turn around and I'll show you in a second. Um, I also have a vise set up with a metal ruler which I'm going to use to have create that groove on the back. Once again, I'm making the back uh, shell, kind of armadillo shell section of his helmet. So let's uh, grab the leather and we'll come back. Okay, so here is the um, the leather that I did, that I've sewn. As you can see here, this is a lot darker. These two were um, sewn together and then molded. And these two were sewn together and then molded and then I sewed these both together. And as you can see here, this side's a lot darker than this side. This one was about 180 degrees. This one was about 170 degrees. I left this in for about 20 seconds um, and I pulled this one out uh, about 15 20 seconds so you can see the difference the longer you leave it in the water the more it's going to absorb you'll actually see it bubbling it's actually not bubbling but the bubbles that are coming um, out of the leather here which is why they, they call it boiling the leather is that it's absorbing into the leather and it's uh, changing the molecules of the leather ma making it a lot more firm when it comes out of the water it's going to be a really rubbery really um, easy to mend and mold and shape and then when it dries it dries into that shape and then the harder function so let's uh, go ahead and do this uh, do this now and I'm submerging it in the water completely all the way so you want to have a pot that's large enough to be able to put the leather in all the way And I got my watch for a time. And that was 20 seconds. And as you can see, it's darkened and it's a lot more flexible. And it's a little bit hot, so you know, don't burn yourself either. Okay, so now we're going to turn around and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do over here. All right, so right out of the water, I'm going to actually kind of mold it and shape it around the bowl, the bowl here to kind of get this rounded shape. And I'm going to just kind of mold and squeeze. I'm going to stretch it because I actually want it to stretch it a little bit. It's very pliable. Like I said, it's soft-ish rubber. Stretching that out. Kind of creating the shape. I'm going to put it on my head. Kind of get the shape as well. So I have an idea of where the shape is going to go and I'm going to use this guy here to kind of give this bevel on the actual because it's got a, like a little bit of a rised bevel on it as well. Um, there you go and I'm going to grab my slicker and I'm also going to use my slicker to do that as well. All right, so here is my slicker, um, and I'm going to kind of get a nice groove on this guy here. 
So it has that kind of raised edge, which is what it looks like in the picture. And I have no idea how exactly Hiccup made this. This is just kind of my own testing. But this is how I'm going to do it to create that shape. And now that it's kind of been out of the water, um, it's starting to actually solidify or get a little bit harder. Still wet. If you want to work with it again, you want it it's still, you want to have more stretchiness, you can always just stick it back in the water, um, in the hot water, and just let it absorb more water because it's just drying out. So I'm going to actually wet it a little bit. Just give it a quick dunk so that I can work with it again and get the edges and all the stuff done. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this. Um, but that's basically how I'm getting the shape of the, uh, the back of the uh, helmet there, the tang. Okay, so um, now that it's all said and done, everything has all been wet molded. As you can see, it's all got the shape to it. It's got the lift. It's got the kind of the tangs at the end. And now I just have to let it dry. Um, after I let it dry, then I'm going to put in the rivets right here to hold it in place. I'm going to stitch these guys together so they stay in place. I might give them a little bit of movement to adjust, uh, but mostly it's just going to go right on my head. And then, of course, I got the staining and all the other things to do. But that's basically the, uh, the tutorial on wet molding and uh, making the helmets. Um, as always, uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel. I'll put a link down at the bottom. Um, uh, leave comments if you have any questions. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, have a great weekend and no matter what it is you go and do out there, find your passion.